Okay, Dan, we were just talking about this word religion because, uh, you know, we have to make sure that we're not uh, part in the world, right? We're of the yep. world, but not in the world. So I think we should tap on to, you know, this world religions and just what is religion, Daniel? Uh, let's let's kind of just tap on this for a second here because there is that verse uh, in James one twenty seven. Uh, there's only five verses in the in the King James that contain the word religion. So everyone else can look that up themselves. Uh, but I just wanted to tap on this topic here. All right. Okay, well, I'll take you into Black's Law. It's quite interesting because um, it's kind of taking, sometimes it takes a view in more in a legal sense and then sometimes it takes a view in uh and uh, it will it will define things like spiritual, meaning opposite to secular, not worldly. Um, so we're not going to say that every definition uh, in blacks is wrong in a sense because it's going down legal. Uh, it, it will define natural uh, as in opposition to legal. So there's you know there's many things um, that uh, that sometimes the eyes don't see right away. And at times what happens, because um, we've heard it, it's a very, it's a very common uh, comment. Oh, I, I don't have anything to do with religion. Okay. And well, then I guess they better give up commerce because commerce is a religion. Because it's a belief. Uh, and it's a creed. Okay. So, uh, and they give credence to it. So. Uh, it, I, I think people just don't sometimes understand or comprehend the word as it is. Uh, so we go to, you know, religion and Black's Law fourth, and it says man's relation to divinity, to reverence, worship, obedience, and submission uh, to mandates and precepts of supernatural or superior beings. In its broadest sense, includes all forms of belief in the existence of superior beings exercising power over human beings by volition, imposing rules of conduct with future rewards and punishments. Then it has one's views of his relations to his creator and to the obligations they impose of reverence for his being and character and of obedience to his will. It is often confounded with uh cultus or form of worship of a particular sect but it is distinguishable from the latter so they're trying to keep it more in a pure sense here bond uniting man to god and a virtue whose purpose is to render god worship due to him as a source of all being and principle of all government of things That's pretty okay. good. And then, uh, so we go into scripture. Um, you know, we can, uh, we oh, go into scripture to, for a moment. You want me to yeah, read this one? I'll read the scriptures if you want. You read the scriptural one. I'll go in one more time into a, uh, you know, a dictionary definition. Okay. So the scripture I'm reading is James 1. Yes. One one twenty six, and I'm going to read one twenty seven as well. Uh, James one twenty six. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. And one twenty seven says, pure religion is undefiled before God, and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Right. That's very interesting. So let me just grab that for a second so we can comment on that because uh, that's not just a quick <laughs> comment. So. Let me just uh yeah i out. like that reference to unspotted so yeah. we're in james james 127 
I already have it marked. So we're trying to put on two glasses there. James 127. Pure religion and undefiled, okay, before God and the Father is this. To visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Well, a spot is a, a blemish, a mark. Um, we know that if you're part of the world, you carry a worldly name, a secular name, right? And then you would need, you know, a secular bond to operate in there. Okay, so there's a problem in there. That's kind of legal bondage. There's a little bit of defiling going on there. Uh, pure religion and undefiled. Okay, so that's not defiled. That's undefiled, which undefiled would mean filed. <laughs> right. So if you look at this statement of birth record, which seems to be quite the crazy document in the framing, uh, they mark the error, they underline the surname as an error, a supposition, even under their own codes. And, uh, you know, basically, it says that this record is on file. Right. When somebody is um, not, if they haven't charged someone, it's a it's a it's a common phrase uh, with even policing that the charge will just kind of sit dormant on file, but it's not until someone acts on it. It's not it's it's not going to go anywhere. There'll be no charge, no procedure. So that's the same of thing like, of, of them saying uh, the charges have been stayed. So it's kind of in a dormant position until someone acts on it, the one who's charging. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but we kind of act on this matter. So that's kind of interesting too. We're the ones that kind of initiate the problem because we act on the charge because the birth certificate is a judgment of unlimited sin of what you can do in the world of legal opposite to free grace. So we take that on and we surety that, okay? We're uh, paying for our part of the common debt and sin now, now i just made i made reference before daniel to you on when it says in uh, 127 pure religion and i clicked on the word religion and it said ceremonial observance yes now now i started to look at that and think in the context which wrongly i did of ceremonial observance is in the old testament kind of like the levitical priesthood and the ceremonies of sabbath keeping and whatnot and then you brought to my attention, well, there is the Last Supper. And that is a ceremonial service. Which we were told to keep doing in memory. Right. You know, of what Christ had done for us. Right. So that appears to be the only New Testament direction of observance of something uh, which could be considered an observance ceremonial uh, to do. Um, and so that's why it was so well laid out on what they did, the breaking of the unleavened bread and of the wine, taking of the wine. Uh, but that was that that would be considered, you know, still a ceremonial observance uh, the Christians would follow. OK, Great. so but there's no other ceremonies or any uh, we'll call them these holy days um, that are in there. Um, that are to be followed. So uh, anyways, just uh, we have to remember, too, that the, the journey of the nation of Israel, when they were under more of a ceremonial ordinances and laws, um, which we would relate to the Mosaic Code, that was at a time that was dealing with after Adamic sin had already occurred and man's journey in sin before the arrival of Christ. When we look at what would have been, you know, uh, in the full sense of understanding Christ being the last Adam, he fulfilled what Adam had not. That's why he came in carnal flesh, but he passed the test and was without sin. And therefore, he died perfect, and he was the perfect sacrifice. So he brought us back to the beginning, which is really what the meaning born again is, back to the Genesis back to the beginning 
because him being the last Adam, he would stand in the place instead of the Adam failed in. And he would be like the father of mankind, so to speak, because he's standing symbolically as Adam. Um, yeah, there was a lot Adam of controversy. Without sin. There was a lot of controversy at the very beginning, though, where they were saying, well, do we circumcise or not circumcise the child, right? And and it was all ceremonial of doing that. At that time, it was it was part of it was relating to the blood covenant separating the nation of Israel from the other nations. Uh, that's what it was. Um, but uh, we know that it's a circumcision of the heart, not of the flesh. Mm -hmm. This has all got to do with the heart. Um, and uh, this was already discussed with Paul, even though there was controversies among some that were of you know, the nation of Israel and would have been born that Jesus, of course, it was was taken through a ceremonial circumcision as a child. But again, you know, he was of that nation of Israel um, by blood and by lineage through uh, uh, both Mary and Joseph of the tribe of Judah. But uh, this was the, the, the new covenant was being opened up uh, to all. And, and therefore, it's a circumcision of the heart, not of the flesh. So, you know, it's interesting that uh, we carry a Gentile name uh, like a, uh, uh, in a symbolism of you being uncircumcised. And then basically uh, when we realize where we're going with this journey, that we'd be cutting off um, the, the legal interest or anything to be part of the collective public world um, to serve without any conflict of interest um, our only primary master, which is Christ, well, then we'd be cutting that off. So it's almost to an extent a, a circumcision um, of the heart, but it's reflecting in just name. Uh, we'd be only bearing the name of our master, which is Christ. So therefore, we wouldn't be in any confounded uh, confusion uh, of merger between the two sides. There'd be no longer, you know, a struggling between two masters. Beautiful. All right. Anything else you want to say before I close it up? Yeah, so there you go. So I know a lot of people have said it. Oh, you know, it's a, a new age thing to say, oh, I'm not religious. That's they're totally foolish anyways, because they're involved in the biggest religion out there, which is being a Mammonite. <laughs> yeah. You know, so they don't they don't have um, they don't have the the, the proper, uh, you know, I would just say uh, wisdom at that moment to realize what that word is. And so we have to be careful because as soon as we jump, there's the word God, but there are many gods, but there is only one true God. Amen. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate yep. it.